Yo, what's good everyone? So this will be a video covering low probability versus high probability trading conditions and how you can find them and avoid them. We will cover a few things in this video, but I'll try and keep it short and hopefully you can hear the audio much better now. To know high probability conditions, you need to know what the order flow is basically. So that is the direction that price is moving and ideally you want to be in one-sided price move. So this is gonna be a little bit of an introduction to institutional order flow, or if you don't know about it, we will cover a bit about it now. So if we look at this side, this is all buy side oriented. So this is all bullish order flow. And to this right side, this is all bearish order flow. So how we can identify order flow is by, when we are bullish, we can look at down close candles supporting price to go higher. And when we are bearish, we could look for up close candles supporting price going lower. So this is ICT's order blocks. Looking at this, we can utilize it on the weekly chart or the daily. Preferably, you want to be trading on the weekly chart for overall directional bias. So you want to know where the weekly candle is going to expand. Is it going to expand higher or lower? From that, that will be your draw on liquidity. So using the weekly chart because the algorithm only does two things. That's either run stops or rebalance and imbalance that's it so that's your job to know when that is likely to happen during the week and why and we will cover some of that in this video now okay so here i have a daily chart of us 100 or nasdaq and we're going to look at what i sort of spoke about before looking at down close candles supporting price when we are bullish so this is how we can identify institutional order flow order blocks are a change of state of delivery so once price trades into an order block you want to see it react from 50 percent or from the order block as its whole. So here you can see on these down close candles, whenever price trades into them, it's very sensitive. And once it trades into them, it just repels away. So that's what you want to see. And that's how you can define, or one of the ways to define institutional order flow. But this is key in identifying high probability trading conditions because you want to be in line with the high time frame order flow. Okay, so once we've identified what the order flow is and we can see on a high time frame such as the daily or the weekly that down close candles are supporting price to go higher we can start to look at when manipulation is going to occur so this is all going to be blended with the economic calendar to engage in these markets you basically need to know when manipulation will occur because without manipulation you can't frame a trading set when we have weeks like fomc and nfp they are advised to be ignored because price is always in a mind of its own so it will usually be traded inside of a range and we're going to cover a inside day and what that looks like and how you can avoid trading until we trade outside of the range. Trading NFP and FOMC, the risk to reward is a much higher risk than reward because one, anyone that says they are trading it, they simply can't because if you're trading with a broker, they will open up the spread and knock you out because if you got to think about it, a broker has to run a business as well and if you can catch a monstrous move like that, it's obviously going to be bad for the broker. But if they can open up the spread and knock you out, they will. And that's what happens on these type of events. Why am I talking a lot about manipulation and why that is key to framing your setups? Because without manipulation, you can't frame trading setups because the manipulation is used as a smoke screen to either run stops or run to an imbalance. If you think about it as a market efficiency paradigm, you can see where price is likely to draw to and why because if they are running stops because of a news event they are looking for a counterpart to their trade and this is where you need to start thinking i want to be on side with them and not be the counterparty for them okay so the main thing you need to take away from all of this is knowing whether weekly candle is going to expand is it going to expand higher or is it going to expand lower with that, you can start framing setups and you can start looking at the daily chart if down close candles are supporting price moving higher. So that's when we are bullish. And if up close candles like here are supporting price to go lower. So that is in line with institutional order flow. Okay, now we're going to go into a little bit about low probability trading conditions. And when you have no clear draw on the weekly time frame and you don't know where the weekly candle is going to expand, this is obviously a week you don't trade. When you know when price is not likely to expand, that gives you the upper hand in preserving your capital, basically. So if you look at this example that I've done right here, we have a candle which has a previous day low and a previous day high. 
and this drawing right here is of the next daily candles as you can see price is trading inside of the previous day high and previous day low so this is where you don't want to be trading this is where you want to be waiting for price to either attack the stops which happens down here and then we expand that area. so this is inside of the range trading obviously you can trade inside of this range however if you want to be trading at a much more high probability conditions you want to be waiting for either buy or sell stops to be taken because you want to be on side with smart money whenever we have a inside day like this that i'm showing i will never put a risk on my life funded account if i'm taking a challenge i will trade inside this range however when you're trading with capital that you can actually make money on instead of challenge account you want to be trading with the highest probability conditions that you can have the low resistance trades which is when you have buy stops or sell stops or a clear draw on the weekly candle so this can create a probability week for the next coming week as we're not taking any stops we're just trading inside a range this is a seek and destroy profile so this is designed to have you inside of the market say if you sell here and you don't take profit or come back up to your stop loss you try and sell and it comes higher so that is a seek and destroy profile it's designed to seek and destroy your orders so if we're not taking previous day high or previous day low that shows that price is reluctant to move so it's not going to cover a large range anytime soon unless we have a manipulation to occur again and this is what happens down here and then we move higher this is an inside day example which you can use to avoid trading days or even weeks okay so here i have an example of a inside range where price is not trading above previous day high of this candle or previous day low of this candle and it's stuck inside of this range until we get to here where this candle takes out this low and it takes out this high over here so this is what you're waiting for you're waiting for price to take buy or sell stops out of this range which it does up here and down here so once you see this you want to look at down close candles supporting price to go higher like it does right now so this is when you are in line with institutional order flow and inside of this this is how you avoid being seek and destroyed because you identified that we are trading inside of a range so this high to this low and as long as we are inside this range you do not want to be pressing any buttons i wanted to cover mondays as well because mondays are considered low probability and not many people know why it's because mondays lack information however we can use mondays to set the tone for the week so we can use how monday trades and look at the previous week's range if it took out previous week high or low that can set the tone for the new week that we are trading inside of however monday should always be avoided if we have no red news event but you should always keep in mind when we have a large expansion the next few days until we trade out of the range that we made like here you don't participate inside of the market because the market goes inside of a seek and destroy profile so previous weeks when we have a large expansion the new week should we shouldn't trade monday or tuesday we wait for a manipulation event if we if we have it on wednesday to take place and we can trade distribution on thursday and friday and especially when we have a large range move the previous day we don't trade the next day and that same goes for a large range session so if london session has covers a lot of pips then we don't trade new york am session we wait for pm session so we spoke about the weekly candle if it doesn't have a clear draw on liquidity if it's not clear that it's going to run stops or it's going to rebalance an imbalance you don't trade the week and we spoke about low probability trading that's when we have a lack of news or we have a large news event which covers a lot of range so the next few trading days are not favored because we are referring to the inside day approach where price is not trading above previous day high or below previous day low then this all ties together with the economic calendar of course which shows you the days that are going to manipulate and that's what you wait for so for example if we have wednesday is a manipulation day you do not trade until wednesday you wait for the manipulation to occur then you trade the distribution on thursday and friday so if we have monday and tuesday having no news and wednesday we have fomc monday and tuesday are viewed as accumulation days and wednesday we have a manipulation and thursday and friday is distribution
Okay, so we're gonna look at an example from last week's trading on DXY and I'm gonna cover what actually happened and where was the high probability trading day. Okay, so here I have last week's trading of DXY. So Monday opened up and we had price action moving higher. And if you draw a line from this candle's low to here, we have a trend line phantom. So this is a buildup of liquidity and 10 a.m. on Wednesday, we had a high impact news event. So this was the manipulation and obviously it took out the stops and any traders trading the trend line. And Thursday was the high probability trading day because we had the distribution days of the weekly cycle. So we were waiting for the manipulation to occur. It happens, we take out the sell side liquidity resting below these lows and then we push out. This is just working off the framework that I spoke about in this video where you look at the economic calendar for manipulation and you only trade after the manipulation has taken place. So I hope you guys learned something from this video and it was useful. As always, any recommendations for a new video is always welcome.